Adventure Time is a fantasy-fueled animated Cartoon Network series that follows Finn and Jake as they adventure around, kicking butt and saving lives. The series is not only a modern-day classic and held in very high regard by many, but it also managed to impressively capture the hearts of a diverse audience of all ages with its clever humor and poignant creativity. Through its monumental 10-season run, the series managed to transcend the television screen of young kids and formed a whole generation of artists and viewers alike in books, games, and online culture. If you enjoy the video, you better subscribe. Stick with me as we go on the quest of a lifetime exploring the conception, themes, and world building of Adventure Time, as well as discover why it was such a revolutionary cultural phenomenon in its time, with a lasting impact that is still felt to this day. You guys are up to something! Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand new videos every single day from December 1st to December 25th. Hop aboard. The series is essentially just two guys being dudes. Just two guys being dudes in a fantasy world, that is. Starring Finn the human and his best friend and bro for life, Jake the dog. The two must navigate a strange, warped world in the near future after the fallout of the Great Mushroom War. Magic has returned to the land and Finn, commonly referred to as Finn the human, is voiced by Jeremy Shada and is characterized as the ideal heroic protagonist. He's characterized as a fiery kid who has a strong desire to help people by doing the right thing. His iconic look consists of his two-eared white hat, blue outfit, and green backpack. And of course, his flowing blonde locks that we get to experience on rare occasions. He also isn't complete without a sword in his hand. While like I said, he's a righteous hero, he's also just a boy. His character shows off a broad range of traits. He can be short-tempered and impulsive. He also craves a sense of security and normalcy within a twisted-up mutant world. And no character is unmarred throughout the course of the 10 seasons of adventuring. His character is knocked down and wronged in so many ways, but he doesn't let it change his character. He just lets things grow with him as he matures. Jake is Finn's older, adoptive brother, who is also the other main character in the series. Voiced by John DiMaggio, Jake sounds and acts a bit more mature than Finn, but I use the word mature very lightly, as he really is just a goofball sometimes. He hits a broad range of character traits, sometimes proving to be incredibly wise and protective, to nonsensical and sometimes self-centered. He's basically the stereotypical chaotic older mentor figure that is prone to crime on some occasions. You know, the typical stuff, right? But he also cares for Finn an incredible amount and proves to be unconditionally loyal to him. Oh yeah, and he has the magical ability to shapeshift into anything. I can't believe I didn't mention that first, but now I am. Jake's magical abilities come in handy on a multitude of occasions. Both Jake and Finn have made heroing their occupations, so they actively go out and seek adventures in the majority of these episodes. Jake's shapeshifting becomes a really nice safety net considering how Finn is especially in the start of the series, can be pretty fragile. The two of them live in their tree fort, which is basically just the coolest tree house that you could ever imagine. When they adventure away from home, they usually spend their time with other characters like Princess Bubblegum, the Ice King, Marceline the Vampire Queen, Lumpy Space Princess, Tree Trunks, Earl of Lemongram, Bemo, and a whole world of other unique magical characters. What the what? <laughs> <laughs> Created by Pendleton Ward, Adventure Time started out as a hit online animated short and over the course of a decade has developed into a Cartoon Network cult classic that everyone recognizes. The origin of the series can be traced all the way back to Ward's years at university at CalArts, specifically at a final film screening called the CalArts Producers Show. In the audience, enjoying the final products of the graduating animation students was Eric Hooman, producer for Frederator Studios. He decided to approach Ward after the show for a few reasons, the main one being he just truly enjoyed his work. He said that every time he saw one of his works, he never wanted it to end. So he invited Penn Ward to pitch some cartoon ideas for Frederator for their shorts anthology series titled Random Cartoons. These would later air on Nickelodeon and be an incredible way to seek out fresh new ideas for potential series. Ward showed up to the pitch with his guitar and instead of presenting a storyboard or just talking through his idea, he sang the what we now recognize as the Adventure Time intro song. And traditionally, bringing a musical instrument to a professional series 
pitch usually would be a red flag for the studio, but the pitch went well and everyone enjoyed his ideas. It took a bit of convincing for Fred of Frederator to commit to Ward's artsy idea, but when he did, Ward entered production full swing, doing a lot of the heavy lifting himself, in terms of animation and voice acting, but he completed the seven minute short on April 24th, 2006. A few months later, it was nominated for an Annie Award, but they had a bit of a problem when it came to screening the short. It hadn't, and due to the production guidelines, couldn't air online yet, but it needed to be accessible to the Annie voters, so they pulled a Sneak 100 and aired it under the radar on Nick's sister outlet, Nicktoons, in the early, early morning hours of January 2007. Shortly after, Frederator posted the short to Google Video and later held a screening for all of the shorts in the Random Cartoons program. Seemingly overnight, it gained tens of thousands, then hundreds of thousands of views. It was an instant online success, developing a very dedicated cult fan base over the course of just a few days. Despite the extremely tangible representation of its success in view counts and reviews, Nick decided to pass on Adventure Time for some reason, something I know they'll regret after seeing its empire grow in the years that followed. But even though Nick turned it down, Frederator and Ward shook it off and took their idea elsewhere, specifically to where Ward had been working at at the time on the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack, Cartoon Network. Fred Seibert approached Rob Scorcher, the chief content officer, with the idea. Scorcher at the time felt the series was something that was unique and indie, something that felt comic booky with a completely new tone. Although it did feel unpolished, they picked up the series, and at the time, it was technically a big risk because the idea was not fully realized. But in pulling his trust in Frederator and this unique story, he took on one of their most successful shows ever. In creating series, there were a lot of influences for Ward, some more traditional ones being Dungeons and Dragons, video games like A Boy and His Blob, and Michael Jackson's Moonwalker arcade game. But in creating the art style, Ward is incredibly vocal about how influential his peers and co-workers were, trying to infuse his art with a lot of little traits here and there from a lot of his co-workers on previous shows. Additionally, in making important decisions like the voice actors, Ward turned to his mother's preferences when choosing what he wanted his show to sound like. His mother, who was not a fan of cartoons and specifically was tired of listening to cartoon voices most characters had, Ward wanted his characters to have a natural tone to them, and not have characters that are just plain annoying just to have an annoying character. He wanted every one of his characters to have a solid range of emotions, exhibiting a more real feel to their personalities. Artistically, when designing the consistent look of the series for his characters, Ward turned to his own tastes and preferences. He says he just likes cute looking stuff, so simple and minimal features were most appealing. The concept of not having noses or anything else on their face to detract from expression was also important. He wanted to reference the classic smiley face's iconic representation of emotion in its simplest form. Another plus side to this is that kids could very easily draw these characters too, which was additionally important to Ward. The flexibility of simple design made it so that not only could viewers and kids simply draw the characters, but even the storyboard artists on the series would have a much easier time with artistic consistency in the series. The first official episode of Adventure Time premiered on Cartoon Network on April 5th, 2010, and faced astounding immediate success ratings-wise. The short pilot on Nicktoons was a fantastic preface and predictor to how the series would be received once realized. From there, the series ran for a staggering 283 episodes in 10 seasons, with one bonus episode special, series of shorts, and an additional miniseries on top of that. It also boasts an impressive number of impact to the gaming world, with several video games, online Cartoon Network games, and so many other types of games released as well. Even a few crossovers or parodies were attempted in stuff like Futurama, The Simpsons, and for some reason, Deadpool. He owns a watch with both Finn and Jake on it. I guess that speaks to how diverse their audience is, but if, you know, you really think about it, Deadpool would love this show. The reason for its success could pretty simply be attributed to the times. The rapidly growing structure of online fandom was undeniable, especially during the time that Adventure Time had originally premiered its short. Once it captured the attention of those online, it spread like wildfire and drove people people of all ages to watch it on Cartoon Network. The humor of the time, too, was also incredibly important. The style of humor was random XD. I'm having graphic flashbacks just thinking about it. But Adventure Time manages to capture that sense of humor in an indirect way and really took the reins. The incredibly bizarre setting gave the artist and crew infinite resources for expressing various themes. They had so much artistic freedom in terms of style and plot devices to really do anything that they wanted, and also offered continuing plots for Finn and Jake to drag the viewer along with them. The team really experimented, and due to its shorter format, they got to try out new tones and explore new places without too much on the line. They would constantly have guest animators come on and make
make these really surreal looking episodes with new art styles and honestly they're some of the coolest episodes of the entire series, getting to really do whatever they wanted. While the series is funny and random XD to a decent extent, it also gives the viewer space to breathe and experience different ranges of emotions. From the beginning of his formative years, Ward loved video games where he could stop on one screen and just sit, looking at the art, taking everything in, noticing new details as he would do that. He notices that when you're watching cartoons, not a lot of shows give you the gift of slowing down. The series also allows deeper themes to be explored like the complexities of parent-child relationships, the difficulty of change, and even the darker side of a post-apocalyptic world, like the subsequent loneliness, depression, and existentialism that comes with it. It also does a great job of making long-lasting character development, which is essential for a series that had such a long and meaningful run. And now for one more thing. <laughs> But I think another really big reason why this show just holds up so well for so many people and created the legacy that it has is because of the world itself, the lore that it built up. While the show can give you moments that are very peaceful and nonchalant, whole episodes that are really just nothing but fun, there's this other side to it that isn't just random XD. While some people may find it overblown and over the top, or overall just a lot to take in, throughout the 10 seasons there is just so much history that we go through, how much we learn about the very distant past, all the way now to the future, and everything in between, with the catalyst of everything being the Mushroom War, how all the events that led up to that happening, how it affected people afterwards, where the world is afterwards, this cute, silly little show about a boy and a dog going on all of these adventures, at the surface level just seems like an enjoyable little show. But if you got invested, if you got hooked into this show, there is so much rich, beautiful lore here that it's hard not to get sucked in. It's hard not to care about these characters, all the weird things that happen. You might meet characters with the most ridiculous names, have the most ridiculous designs, but somehow, even in its weirdest moments, it just fits for the show. Having great characters and very cool visuals is something that is always going to get someone's attention. But to give your audience something that is tangible, something to ponder over, something to study and take something away from, give them opportunities to form theories and ideas, come to their own conclusions about certain things, this is what builds something that is undeniably a cultural phenomenon. Although it did have some inconsistencies with airing and sometimes was prone to the bomb treatment, it still managed to reach a huge huge audience that was incredibly vocal about their love for the show. And the impact didn't stop there. Artists from the series were inspired by their time working on the show and went off to create further iconic and well-known shows that have garnered their own success in their own right. The series would also just keep bringing it home at every award ceremony, as you can imagine, being nominated for one, or sometimes more than one, Primetime Emmy every year for 10 years, and winning half of those nominations. It knocked it out of the park in both audience and critic impressions. So if the series was so freaking popular, popular, why did it end? Well, everything's gotta end sometimes, right? I don't know what to tell you, man. If you're still angry about it ending after 10 seasons, ask yourself, will you ever be satisfied? Jokes aside, the original series really just ran its course, but of course, as HBO showed with its miniseries Distant Lands, everyone is still very much interested in seeing more of Finn, Jake, and their whole wide world of friends. It's only been a year since the miniseries ended, so it's very understandable to be hopeful and asking, what's next for our adventuring duo? And lucky you, there's an answer. HBO and Cartoon Network will be exclusively releasing a special series on the HBO Max streaming service, which will be titled Adventure Time, Fiona, and Cake. Retaining a lot of the same crew, the series will focus on the adventures of the Finn and Jake genderbenders, Fiona and Cake. In one of the season three episodes sharing the same title, we got to explore an Ice King fan fiction that takes place in an alternate world where every character's gender is swapped. Based on that idea, the series will deal with hot topics like the multiverse and will feature new villains. The series as of right now is set to premiere sometime next year in 2023, and I'm incredibly excited to see what it has to offer. The success of Adventure Time, though, cannot be understated. Outside of the show, the biggest thing that would propel Adventure Time to literally being this cultural movement was the merch associated with it. All different types of people were fans of the show. It didn't stay tied to one demographic or another, and I single-handedly blame Adventure Time for turning Hot Topic from this, well, to this. It had appeal to such a large fan base, 
completely taking over the 2010s market, and helped pave the way for the rise of more shows in this manner throughout the previous decade that seemingly took over Cartoon Network. Whether you enjoyed a bunch of the shows that came from this or not is besides the point. What Adventure Time achieved has become a legacy to Cartoon Network, a movement that helped shift into the more modern style of cartoons on Cartoon Network. It continued on to carry the torch from earlier shows from the end of the 2000s from stuff like Chowder and Flapjack, and made a massive splash in the animation space. It inspired people, it built new careers beyond it, and most of all, it made Nickelodeon question their decision to pass on the show. What are your thoughts on Adventure Time? Were you there living through the rise of it and partaking in the fandom? Were you late to the party but still jumped into it when you did? Or were you never really into Adventure Time at all? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later. I'm gonna make it.